Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we are going to be doing some shorter term technical analysis on Bitcoin. Specifically, we're going to be talking about how Bitcoin just broke above the 20 daily exponential moving average and how pretty much every single moving average on the Bitcoin chart is calling right now a good buying opportunity for Bitcoin. Because guys, with Bitcoin breaking above the 20 exponential moving average and rallying to test $11,000 as resistance, it harkens back to what we said in yesterday's video where Bitcoin needs to break 11 k to be able to go into a new rally. And once it does that, good things are going to happen. So in today's video, we're going to be breaking down what exactly is going on on the Bitcoin chart. And we're also going to be diving into some news because we've had an update on the KuCoin hack. And it comes to my attention that it seems like around $200 million were stolen, not 150. We're also going to be diving into some news regarding exchange-traded products, so make sure you stick around for that. If you do enjoy today's video, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel when you do that. But without much further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. I tell you what, we are still trying to get used to this new set, so guys, bear with me here. We are still getting used to it. But believe me, you guys are going to like these videos a lot more as we get more settled into this set. If you guys were here when we first moved into my previous set and I did the face reveal, you may remember it took us a few months to really get settled in, and that might happen here. But guys, I'm really looking forward to what we can do here. Without much further ado, let's jump onto the chart. Guys, the last couple of days on Bitcoin have seen a lot of sideways price action, but luckily enough, we have seen something pretty bullish happen. As you can see on yesterday's candlestick, we did manage to bounce off of the 20 daily exponential moving average, breaking above it. Now, we have to understand that this has happened one time before in recent memory, and it didn't really lead anywhere, but this time may be different, and I'm about to show you why. One of the first things I want to touch on is that, guys, look at this Bitcoin MACD. We were already trending to the upside. It looked like we were going to have a bearish cross, but luckily we didn't. And when Bitcoin did go back into an uptrend, we started seeing the MACD diverge on itself in a bullish way once again. Not only that, guys, the RSI is sitting in very healthy territory and trending to the upside once again. And even though volume is low, we are seeing it start to pick back up as the weekend had very, very low volume. I would keep a close eye on this volume metric moving into the rest of the week. One thing to keep in mind also, guys, is that Heiken Ashi looks very green right now. In fact, we see a long upper shadow and no lower shadow on today's candlestick. That, if you've been through CT2A, you will know, is a very good thing for Bitcoin. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind, guys, is that even though Bitcoin is looking pretty healthy and we're about to jump into another very bullish topic on Bitcoin, we have had some very bad things happen lately. For example, the KuCoin hack. Hacks on Bitcoin generally are not very good fundamental news stories for Bitcoin, of course. And even though Bitcoin looks very bullish, it still needs to prove itself. We are not in an uptrend right now. We are trading sideways. And remember, the trend is your friend until it ends. Until Bitcoin's sideways trend ends, we need to respect that and understand that that is the prevailing trend. With that being said... Take a look at this. This is something called the technical analysis summary on the Bitcoin over dollar chart. And as you can see down here, it breaks it up into oscillators and moving averages. If you guys aren't familiar with this, this is part of trading view. You can see it right down here. And if you hit more technicals right there, it will bring up these different odometers, speedometers, techni technicalometers, Bitcoinometers, something like that. As I said, this screen breaks down the technical analysis on Bitcoin, the automated technical analysis into oscillators and moving averages. And we can see that on the moving averages especially, everything is buy. We have the Ichimoku cloud line being neutral, which I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. And we also have the SMA 50 being a sell. But in general, every single moving average almost is pointing in the buy direction. And by the way, that Ichimoku cloud, it's referring to this line on the Ichimoku indicator and Bitcoin is right below it. That's why it's saying neutral, not sell. I would never encourage you to rely solely on one technical analyst's analysis. And I also certainly wouldn't encourage you to rely just on automated technical analysis like this. But there is something to be said when automated technical analysis like this on TradingView that is very refined by a very well-known and respected company such as TradingView is giving us such a clear signal. That is a lot of buy signals, my friends. And it's not just that. You can see over here on CoinMarketCap that Bitcoin is right below $11,000, as we already know. It's up 2.5%, and it's not the only one. A lot of the altcoins are doing very, very well, some of them in double-digit gains right now. Ethereum, for example, is doing very well right now, sitting just below $367, which if you know anything about the history of Ethereum, you will know that is a pretty significant level of support and resistance on our chart here. And Ethereum also finds itself in this longer term flagging pattern that would likely result in a statistical bullish breakout. I want you guys to understand that right now the Bitcoin technicals look very, very bullish, but we also haven't proven anything yet. Bitcoin technicals can look as bullish as they want, but if Bitcoin is not in a bullish trend, it doesn't really matter that much now, does it? So while I am confident in Bitcoin right now, we need to see Bitcoin do exactly this. 
we need to see Bitcoin break up to and above $11,110. That is our previous level of resistance that we set a couple of weeks ago. And if Bitcoin can break above that, we will be in a well-defined uptrend. Bitcoin would then have higher lows and it would then have higher highs. If Bitcoin can do that, it'll regain my confidence in a new uptrend. The technicals and the fundamentals are supporting that uptrend. We just need to see it start now. So pay close attention to the volume, the retail investor interest, and pay close attention to everything else in the fundamental landscape. Guys, this hack is a very bad thing for Bitcoin, but in general, the fundamentals look pretty strong on Bitcoin. Now, guys, even though I am, of course, very bullish on Bitcoin, we have to understand when things are not going our way. And right now, what's happening with KuCoin is certainly not a good thing for Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. And I'm sorry to report that, unfortunately, it seems that even more money was taken from KuCoin than we initially predicted and thought. Freeze, pause, and reboot. Projects react differently to the $200 million KuCoin hack, up from $150 million before. Following news of a security breach resulting in the loss of more than $200 million worth of tokens on KuCoins, many projects quickly reacted to prevent users' holdings from being moved off to other exchanges. We talked about this hack in a previous video, which I will link in the top right. The good news is, according to CEO Johnny Liu, at least $129 million of the tokens affected in the breach and the Bitcoin, Ether, and ERC hot wallets impacted were safe or in a position to be recovered. Now guys, this article is essentially breaking down which altcoins were affected, how the different altcoin projects are trying to put rollbacks onto the chain, use hard forks to recover some of the lost cryptocurrency. I'm not going to go into all of that. If you'd like to read about how each individual project is working to get that money back in the hands of who it belongs to, this article will be linked in the description down below. What I really want to talk about here though is this. I want to talk about safety in cryptocurrency because there's a very important and valuable lesson that can be learned here. On Friday, I posted on Twitter and also on the community tab of this channel asking you guys to let me know what you think someone needs to know in their first 30 days working in cryptocurrency. And one of the most common responses we got was about security. Security of your keys, security of your crypto, making sure that you're keeping your crypto on a cold wallet, a paper wallet, not on exchange. The whole idea of not your keys, not your coins. And guys, whenever something bad happens in cryptocurrency or in life in general, I try and learn as much as I possibly can from it, whether it was my mistake or someone else's. And this is a mistake on behalf of the people that were leaving tons and tons of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency on exchange. I'm sorry to tell you, but if you have left 90% of your coins on exchange and you lost all of them, I'm not saying it was your fault that the exchange got hacked. However, take this as a lesson to make sure that you keep as much of your cryptocurrency off exchange as possible. As we said in yesterday's video and as we talked about a couple of days ago, if you don't have your own private keys and they're not solely in your possession, they are not your coins because they could very easily be hacked as we saw here, unfortunately. Luckily, the insurance fund and many of the different altcoin projects are using rollbacks and hard forks like we said to fix this. But guys, I want to instill in you personal responsibility and make sure that we are keeping our coins and our crypto safe by using cold wallets. We have Ledger Nano S referral links down below. I may even make a video on how to use them because I think it's so very important that people have their cryptocurrency in safe positions. Guys, even if you're using an Exodus wallet, that's a lot better than keeping your money on exchange. Try to the best of your ability not to leave your cryptocurrency on exchange. It is a very dangerous thing to do indeed. My heart goes out to anyone affected by this. I really hope the CEO, John Liu, and his team can get as much of that money back to the people that it belongs to as possible. And I honestly think a lot of it will be recovered because of how these altcoin projects are handling the situation. And by the way, the way these altcoin projects are handling the situation does bring up a lot of questions about the concept of decentralization. So we may touch on that in a future video. If you guys would like, let me know in the comment section down below. But guys, before we wrap the video out, there's one thing I want to talk about. And it has to do with this set that I'm sitting in right now. Because on Friday, I mentioned in Friday's video that, yeah, this is a new set. It's going to be a little rough around the edges. We got to get in our groove. We got to figure out what we're doing. By the way, I know a lot of you guys wanted the Bitcoin sign moved over. See this spot right there? That's exactly where it's going. I just haven't moved it yet. It will be here relatively soon. But the point I want to make to you guys is that we just took a very bold step moving out of the set that we know works and that we know can we can use to grow the channel into this new set that we now have to learn how to use. And believe me, it is not very comfortable working in a new set. I'm used to working in the old one. I'm used to being on camera in the old one. So this is a bit different for me and I have to get used to it. But I want to use this as an allegory to moving into cryptocurrency because when you get into cryptocurrency, you have to take a bold step and invest money in something that you don't know is going to work. More, more than the money, because hopefully you're not investing more than you can afford to lose, you need to invest the time and the focus and the dedication and the diligence. And you don't know whether or not it's going to pay off. We don't know if this set is going to pay off. We don't know if this is going to boost our production value. We don't know if this is going to drive new subscriber growth. We don't know if this is going to make our brand image look a lot better. We don't know that. But we are taking a bold step to make the content better 
for you guys. And we don't know how that's going to pan out. In the same way, you don't know how moving into cryptocurrency is going to pan out, but that doesn't mean you don't do it. Because guys, you're, you're never going to get anywhere in life if you don't take risks. You're never going to get anywhere in life if you don't change. You're never going to get anywhere in life if you're not upgrading your set, if you're not upgrading your knowledge, if you're not upgrading your talents, if you're not upgrading your discipline. Guys, I encourage you, continue working on yourself. We are trying to work on these videos as a mirror of how important it is for you and me and everyone to continue in self-development. Because if you're not developing yourself, the world will leave you behind. I guarantee it. So am I salty about the 150 people saying the exact same thing in Friday's comment section? No, I'm not, because they were absolutely right. The switching camera angles was a little bit weird. We're getting used to it. Like I said, give us a few months to get settled in, probably only a few weeks, to be honest with you. But guys, I'm warning you, don't ever let paralysis of analysis stop you from investing your time and money into cryptocurrency. Instead, boldly go and learn as much as you possibly can, improve as fast as you can, and watch where the fruits of your labor will bring you. Anyway, guys, that is going to wrap it out for today's video. Before I go, though, if you did enjoy today's video, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel when you do that. We're trying to get to 75K subs by the end of the year, and I need your help for that. But anyway, guys, like I said, that is going to wrap it out for today's video. Before I go, though, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.